In this lesson three video, we're going to look at installing Windows Server 2016. I'm going to use Data Center Edition as a virtual machine in Hyper-V. Now, this would work for any edition of Server 2016, 2012, 2012 R2. Optionally, there's a second video that shows you how to install it again for our second domain controller in our series of videos. So we're ready to install our very first virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and install a Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition virtual server into Hyper-V. So what I'm going to do is come up here and click New and Virtual Machine. And I'm going to walk through the wizard. Now this first time I'm going to walk through the wizard in a little bit more detail than I will in subsequent videos where we install the rest of our servers and our associated clients. So I'll go ahead and say Next through here. I'd suggest you pause and read this. Here, I'm going to give it the name of the virtual machine, not of the computer. I'm actually going to have to go in and configure the computer name, but I'm going to give it the same name. In this case, it's going to be MIIM SVR DC 0001 dash WIN 2016 DC. So let me explain this to you real quick. Normally, I wouldn't have a computer name this long, okay? But sort of a standard MIIM, Master IT in Minutes, so that's the pseudo company that I'm using. SVR lets me know it's a server. DC lets me know it's a domain controller. And 0001 would allow me to create 9,099 domain controllers in this case. Now, because this is a lab environment, I'm just adding the fact that this is a Windows 2016 data center edition, okay? So store the virtual machines. Uh, I'm gonna just choose the default, which if you notice I've changed. Uh, it's under users, my data folder, documents. I've created a folder called virtual machines and it's gonna put all the virtual machine configuration files in there for me. So put those wherever you feel they are. If you have a bunch of drives, disperse them over the drives for general performance in your lab environment. I'll go ahead and click Next. In this case, because it's 2016, I am going to use a Generation 2. Again, go ahead and pause and review that. Uh, Windows 7, we're going to create one of those. We're going to have to use a Generation 1 for that. So I'll choose Next. At this point, I've got 16 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to give this machine 204080-bit. I can use dynamic memory, which means it's only going to use the memory that it needs to run the machine. In the lab environment, that's okay. Uh, if I wasn't running in lab, I want to dedicate memory to the machine so that it always has that memory available. It's not having to go pull more memory from the available RAM. So in this case, um, because I have 16 gigs, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the dynamic. I'm going to dedicate that RAM to it. If you're going to run a bunch of virtual machines, you may want to just do that. Remember we created that virtual switch. I'm going to go ahead initially and connect it to the external switch because it's part of this video, although I'm not going to pain you through it. We would do all the updates that are available for the machine before we start using it. So I'll go ahead and say next here. If you notice, it's going to create a virtual hard disk. We're going to walk through the basics and then as we install Active Directory, we're going to need to add another disk here before we use this machine as a domain controller. I'm going to go ahead and just make it 60 gig. These are dynamic. Again, lab environment. Um, read through this. If I had an existing virtual hard disk I was moving over, I could do that as well. And I could attach a virtual hard disk later if I wanted, if I just wanted to create the virtual machine now. So I'll choose Next. I am going to install an operating system. So I'm going to go browse for my ISO. It happens to be out here. I've got a little solid state drive that has some software installation files. Here's my ISO. So it's going to go ahead and pull that off my external solid state and install that OS. I'll choose next and finish. Now at this point, it's going to go ahead and instantiate that virtual machine. What I need to do is if you notice the state is off, so I'll double click it so that I can connect to it and I will power on the machine by starting it. Now, we'll talk more about, I'm going to go ahead and hit that boot. Looks like I missed it. Let me try again. It'll boot the system. 
We'll talk more about how to make these better fit your screen. It's a real challenge with DPIs in subsequent videos. I am going to go ahead and just move this up here a little bit so that we can see the whole machine and we'll walk through the rest of the install. At this point, I'm going to choose next and install now. Now it is going to come up and ask me for a key. And since I am an instructor, I do have a legal lab key. I want you to install these with legal licenses. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video while I put in the key and get to the next screen. So it has accepted my key and I have two choices. I can either create a server core instance without the desktop experience or data center with the desktop experience. Now, in subsequent videos, we'll go ahead and create server cores and look at those. But in this case, we want to keep it simple. I'm going to go ahead and install the desktop experience and choose next. It'll have me accept the license agreement. Make sure you're reading through these. Sometimes you find you can install instances of software multiple times for what you just paid. I'm going to do a custom. There's my unallocated virtual hard disk that I created. Uh, in when we set up the virtual machine, I'm going to have it installed there. I'll choose next. And it'll go ahead and copy the files. I'll pause while it copies the files and gets ready for the installation. So running in a solid state environment, this is a pretty quick process, as you can sort of see. It's installing the features, it can install in the update, and it'll finish up. So I'll go ahead and pause until the next screen that requires input comes up. So real quick, you can see that it's going to go ahead and restart the machine. We'll go ahead and pause while it restarts. Now, as it goes through this process with Server 2016, it's going to go ahead and it possibly restart a couple times. If you notice, it's given me a default uh, username of administrator. We'll talk more about not using this default in the future, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a complex password. I want to practice my same um, practices on my lab environment as I would in my production environment. So I'll go ahead and give it that. And then choose finish. At this point, it's going to go ahead and initialize the machine. I'll click to get the startup screen here. Put in that password that I gave it. Now remember, these days, a passphrase, that's actually what I'm using, a passphrase is suggested so that we can have a long, uh, you know, longer character passwords, uh, passwords over using a password with special characters, etc. So anyway, it'll initialize the machine. Now the first thing and the only thing that I'm going to do with the remaining time on this video is remember we named the virtual machine MIM SVR DC0001, but as we come into this machine, we'll see that that's not the, the name that has been given to the computer because that virtual switch that I installed, I am going to connect it to the network here. So I'll choose next there. And as soon as server manager comes up, I'll be able to manage that. So let me go ahead and pause while it continues its initial um, boot. Here we go. That didn't take long. Server manager is coming up. And we'll be able to see that by default, it gives it a real funky computer name. So if I go to local server, I can get the information on that. And again, right now, the switch you know, is essentially using the physical switch, I don't need to worry about uh, doing anything with the network interface card at this point. We'll do more on that as we create static IP addresses for these domain controls. All right, so now that server manager is up, I'm going to go ahead and click on computer name. Now, the computer description, you can choose what to put in there. I might put in that this is the primary domain controller. That's what this machine is going to eventually be. I'll choose change. And I want to change this funky computer name to parallel that that I gave the virtual machine name. So I'm going to say MIIM SVR DC 0001 dash. And then uh, since we did put win 2016 DC, I'm going to put that as well. Uh, right now, I'm not going to associate this with a domain. I'm just changing the computer name. So I'm going to say OK. 
it's going to give me a default net BIOS name, which I'm fine with. At this point, what it'll do is it'll restart the computer. And I'll pause while it does that, just show you that the name's been changed. Now, as a note, since I'm working on the high DPI, um, this virtual machine has been installed in enhanced mode. And I can go ahead and choose, you know, a designated pixel size that I want the virtual machine to be at. Again, as you can see, this makes it pretty difficult to view. Right now, I'm going to just go ahead and do this for you because from here on out, once we install the virtual machines, we're going to actually use a remote desktop connection manager, which makes managing virtual machines and resolution much easier. And I will show you that in this video as well. So here's the machine. Uh, I can go in and look and the computer name will have been changed. So as you can see, I'm in computer manager. There's the virtual machine name. I realize it's difficult to read. Again, we'll use desktop connection manager once we get all of our machines installed. Now, the next step that I want you to do is make sure that you update, go out, do the Windows update, update all of the machines that we're going to create in this base environment. Take care. Mm -hmm.